This week, we're gonna discuss good, better, or best, and how some of our best ideas are actually the things that keep us from the good life. So market volatility has reared its ugly head again this week. Market's down about 2%, and undoubtedly it's leaving a lot of people wondering, what is the best course of action to take moving forward? Is it to get all out before the market goes down more? Is it to use this uh, sell-off this week to get all in before it goes back up? Those are the types of questions and pressures that, to get best that keep so many people from getting to the good life. So that's what we wanna talk about this week is the challenges of good, better and best, and really where you should be putting your time and your focus. So the setup is this. There's a recent Dalbar study that, that came out that showed 50% of the underperformance that most investors face is due to psychological or behavioral finance related issues. Now, shocking, there's been a number of such studies. Vanguard's done one, Russell's done one, where they show these behavioral finance challenges that again, we all struggle with, can be a two and a half to 3% impact on performance over time. The second biggest reason cited in the Dalbar study for underperformance was a lack of capital, all of which comes back to having a great partner to help you with the first and having a great process to help make sure you don't run into those lack of capital challenges. This is good. This is the best path to get to the good life is finding that partner. Uh, Jason Zwig, Wall Street Journal columnist, highlighted recently in a quote, said this is the job of managers to quote, take a public stand when market valuations get too extreme, warning their clients about excessive enthusiasms at the top and patiently encouraging them at the bottom. One of the ways to impact that behavioral finance challenge again is to have a partner who can come alongside of you, be there to support you uh, and then you can walk that walk together. The second one is having a process that again lets you know if you're on track takes away the pressure of having to be a market timer, takes away the pressure of having to try to be perfect. Um, those are the things that are going to derail. For us here, that's quite literally a process with our clients where we go through of helping them understand what are their top goals and then how from a time perspective, a money perspective, and an emotional perspective, can we get them where they're going and be able to map that on an ongoing basis to keep them on track. And that's what's highlighted here within uh, our client portal. Number one is the plan, are you on track? What are the different timings of events, whether that's a remodel, a trip, a retirement, and how do those need to be adjusted to help make sure your financial picture stays in great shape? The second is money. That lack of capital challenge mentioned in the Dalbar study. How can we make sure that there's enough income to keep you retired, get you to retirement, or get you through the inevitable challenges and unexpected events that life and markets will undoubtedly throw at all of us? And finally, emotion. Uh, again, speaking back to that behavioral finance challenge for us, what is the style of portfolio? What is the level of volatility within that portfolio that you want to experience so that you can feel comfortable or as comfortable as you can through again the inevitable market swings to see things through from point A to point B to stay invested over the whole time. So what's the enemy of good? Well, one of them is a case of the better thans and all the hundreds, thousands of meetings that we've had with clients. Never once has someone said my number one goal in life isn't to spend more time with family or chase my passions or make work optional, which is what we usually hear. Uh, it's really to have uh, more money than my friend Joe and yet, when we look at some of the people's subconscious behaviors, pressures, uh, self-criticism that they put on themselves has everything to do with comparative uh, type behaviors, whether that's just how much money someone has uh, as compared to them or the trade that they wish they would have made. Oh, I wish I would have been all in stocks. Or I wish I would have gotten all out of the stock market. Or I wish I would have put it all on you know, Tesla in October. Um, these are the types of things that you'll hear people bring up uh, that undoubtedly are weighing them on some level and maybe even leading them to make uh, decisions that are going to again, cause setbacks in terms of chasing tops, panicking, panicking at bottoms, chasing the past returns of a certain investment set. Better than is just not relevant to your story. That's somebody else's story. And the trade-offs that you have to make amongst those things that when we sit down with couples are important to them are tough enough. Because even amongst those things that we do value, we can't necessarily do them all or do them all at the same time. So release that pressure. Be mindful, again, of those subconscious um, things that will weigh on you and try to get you off track. 
Lastly is best. What is best? Um, right now, people are wondering if the best thing again might be to get out of the market or uh, to use this opportunity to get all into the market. Undoubtedly, some people saw Tesla's recent run and they wish they would have put it all on that or, or the run of Apple over the last year and they wish they would have put it all on that. The truth is, again, there's a reason people speak to patients. There's a reason people speak to diversification is the truest, surest path to getting to where you want to go is being a disciplined investor and being disciplined within your investment decisions. And part of that is realizing that, again, best is theoretical. We did a piece a couple years ago where I talked about the best performing thing over time has been small cap value stocks. And while they might be a piece of your portfolio, they shouldn't be the whole portfolio. They have little to no income. They have a whole lot of volatility. So to that money and that emotion perspective, there's going to be real challenges to enabling you to get to where you want to go, even if over 30, 50 years, it might be the best performing thing that you could have held. And understanding that interplay, walking through that with you is something that we enjoy uh, doing very much. In summary, good is great. If that is defined as what is the good life for you, that's a very personal story. And getting there doesn't have to do anything about putting that pressure on yourself around market timing, making perfect investment choices, which is again, illusory in any case. Leave it right there for this week. For those of you who are taking this journey with us, thank you as always. For those of you who are curious to find out more, reach out anytime. Thanks so much.